Hello Internet! Today in this tutorial I'm going to turn photos in 3D animations in After Effects. We're going to have fun on famous movie star pictures by using the last updated version of Volimax 6. Polymax was used by thousands of artists, photographs and studios all around the world for TV shows, movies, documentaries and even After Effects beginners who want to animate their pictures. Polymax can be found on Envato Market. The last version includes four tools that allows you to work on almost any kind of pictures. Polymax Portrait, that we are going to use today. Volumax Landscape to animate your travel pictures, for example. Volumax Smart for various subjects like animals, food, complex landscapes. And Volumax Projector to animate architecture, flat landscapes, city views and more. The setup in Volumax Portrait is quite easy and fast. It's based on a wire mesh that has to be adjusted to your picture. Choose your angle and push the mesh to make it fit just like the liquify tool in Photoshop. Hi, my name is Gaten from Cream Motion. Today I'm going to show you the process to animate this photo of Emma Stone in 3D. Then we will see the secret behind the Captain America setup. Before starting with Volimax, I opened my picture in Photoshop. I used the Select Subject tool to put her on a layer. Ok, I'm gonna get the selection with Ctrl click on the layer and hide it. I'm now in the background. I'm going to expand the selection, something like 40 pixel is ok in this case, and I'm going to clean a little bit the selection around the hair. I'm now going to do a fill with the content aware activated. And here is my background. I'm just going to use the stamp tool to clean a little bit more. And now I'm ready to save my PSD file to import it in After Effects in Volumax. Ok, so I opened After Effects and my Volumax Portrait project file. And I'm going to import my PSD. The first layer, the character. And the second layer in the PSD, the background. Ok. I'm going to double click on this button named Photo to import my character. I'm going to resize it so it fills all the space on the composition. I'm going to close this panel. And now I have two options. I can add a background or I can do the setup directly. I'm going to add the background. I'm going to drag and drop it in the composition and scale it to make it match. I can now close this composition. I'm now going to go in the setup by double clicking on this button. We can see our two wire mesh, blue and pink, and some smart objects. We will see later how this works. I'm going to deactivate my portrait 2. And I'm going to go in the effects panel to show you how this works. I'm going to activate woman. And here I can select the angle of the mesh. In our case, I'm going to stay just at the default setting facing to the camera. I'm going to make it match the closest possible with rotations and scales. I'm now going to adjust my 3D mesh by using this tool and by pushing the wire mesh on my picture. So you have to make everything match uh, the eyes, the nose, the mouth and for the neck I'm going to use the included neck adjust because I don't need it to go far. In this case we will use the smart object. I'm now going to click on the X-Ray Mode button and 
If I click here, I'm going to see my death map. We're going to test it in the main comp. I'm gonna grab the controller and start moving in my scene. We can see the 3D effect applied on the face of the model here and the background sliding just behind Emma Stone. But we don't see any animation on the hair or on the shoulders. They are very flat, so I'm going to go back in my setup to create smart objects. You have to work on them in the order close to four. So I'm going to activate the first one. I'm going to use the pen tool and start drawing the hair in the close position. That means I'm going to draw the closest object in my scene. Now I'm going to draw the rest of the hair on the smart object too. So if I activate Smart Object 1 and Smart Object 2, I can see I have drawn all the hair. I'm going to get out of the X-ray mode. And the hair is very flat. I'm going to do some adjustments. I can adjust the brightness. I can adjust the 3D position of the object meaning it's going to go behind or in the middle of the 3D portrait. You can see it better like this. This is very interesting for hair or clothes. I can now volumize my smart masks and add some detail based on the picture. That way, it's going to be more realistic. We can see the hair is included in the 3D animation now. I'm going to do a screenshot, so you will see with and without the hair in 3D. So now you can see the effect of the death map on the hair on the smart objects. I'm now going to finish my drawing by using the smart object 3. You can see that I'm drawing far away from the borders of the picture. So I'm going to adjust uh, in the first place my 3D position for the neck and the shoulders. So this is my finished death map and I'm going to show you something very interesting in the last version called Darken and Lighten. You can relight your uh, smart object. Uh, in this case, the shoulder on the right is closer to the camera than the shoulder on the left. So it's brighter. And I did that also in the hair uh, of the model. Okay, so this is starting to look very nice. You can move left, right, up and down. You can do some rotations. And you have a lot of adjustments uh, in the controller, in the effect panel. You have the relax, if you want to relax your death map because you are seeing some distortions maybe. You can boost your 3D, okay? And you can add something called parallax. This is going to get some extra 3D uh, on your model or on your pictures. It's going to be a little bit more time consuming, but I think it's worth it because this is going to make the difference. A new feature called eye tracking is really interesting because your model is going to track the camera with uh, the eyes while moving in 3D. You can do zoom parallax using the same technique than the add parallax fx uh, to zoom in your model um, in 3D. The classic zoom, just moving like a zoom. You can add some fisheye effect. You can adjust on horizontal or vertical uh, the position of your uh, layers. 
You can adjust the background distance and the background scale in the 3D space. You can spherize the, the background. And you have the depth of field effect where you can choose your focus point and uh, exclude the portraits. Okay, so we're going to do an animation here. At the frame zero, I'm going to put my controller on the left here. I'm going to go at three seconds and simply move my controller on the right, just like this. I'm going to add a little bit of a parallax for extra 3D and do a preview. Actually, my viewport is set in one quarter quality. This is great for uh, most of the computers to have something uh, in real time, just like I'm doing now for the previews and when you move your controller. Okay, this is nice. I'm gonna add some flares. You can add right or left flares and uh, choose the one you like. Okay, you can change the scale adjust vertically and horizontally the position of the flare, change the color balance and the saturation. Then we can activate the particles. First of all, we have the dirt, giving a nice vintage look to your pictures. And uh, then you have all the library of particles. You have to activate 3D particles, just like this, and select which one you want to use. You can also import your custom particle uh, to replace the smiley here. I'm going to choose this one. You can change the density if you want less or more particles in your scene. I'm doing a preview now. You can also change the blur, deactivate one of the four layers of particles, uh, change the opacity and many things, the color and adjustments. You can see it move here in real time in your scene. Of course, now it's a little bit slower because we activated the parallax and added some particles. Um, you can do some color adjustments too. Um, you can you have nice Instagram effects. You can change exposure, uh, the gamma, the contrast, saturation. You can protect uh, a zone. If you have a lot of distortions, you can just uh, draw a protect zone. You can also paint your death map to add some extra detail on clothes or jewelry or hair by using the brush in After Effects. You can activate the guides uh, if you don't want to use this uh, horizontal format. You can choose one of them, uh, square, portrait or vertical mode. These are not going to be exported, they are just guides for the animation. Okay, and then we're going to export our scene by double-clicking on the export presets. So we have the fast export compositions in 180p, Instagram square, portrait, vertical, and the slow export compositions in 4K square portraits. And of course, the Facebook 3D photo preset to export to your social media. And here is my final result with a little bit more of adjustments. Now I'm going to show you super fast my setup behind the Captain America animation. I added flares coming from the right, 3D sparks in the particles panel with some dirt. The shield is in the foreground in a 3D object. Nothing fancy here, just a shield and a death map. Here you can see the basic setup with the character and the background. The character in the photo composition and here is the background in the background composition. Let's go take a look at the portrait setup. Here is my wire mesh adjusted and my smart objects. I could have used less objects, but I wanted to push the limits with something very accurate here. Let's take a look at the death map. For the helmet, I used a simple trick. I just created a white solid at the top with a mask 
and low opacity to create the volume above the face. Don't forget that we are still in After Effects. You can add your own FX and layers. Now I'm going to show you how I exported in 1080p. I opened the Adobe Media Encoder. In the Composition panel, I prefer using the shortcut Ctrl Alt M. Usually, I choose the H264 or H265 codec. The YouTube 1080p is perfect in this case. Then I choose a file name. You can see on the left details about the computer I am using here. Processor speed is the key in this case. And I work on a i7 5960X processor with 8 cores bought in 2014. A decent machine, but not the fastest on the market today. This render in Full HD was done in 2 minutes and 35 seconds. Pretty fast. Just before ending this video, here is an honest comparison between Volumax and a famous competitor struggling in the viewports at the same resolution and inaccurate with depth map creation. Volumax 6 is the fastest and most accurate 3D photo animator on the market. Don't forget to subscribe to be informed of the coming videos about Volumax 3D Photo Animator. Thank you for watching.